one of my clients and you know is in a management consultancy and I asked him do you engage in any rituals with your clients and he gave me a very weird look and and you know he was a bit puzzled by that idea and he said rituals I don't do any rituals why should I do any rituals and I said well did you propose to your wife with a ring you know and he said yeah of course I said do you celebrate birthday parties with your kids of course did you have a big wedding yes of course we engage in rituals all the time and I think your annual meeting here is a kind of a ritual as well if you do that on a regular basis we need to be very mindful of these things because when people engage in rituals actually what happens is that they release a lot of oxytocin and what that means is that um, for example what you can see here is Paul Sack. He's a very eminent neuroscientist on oxytocin levels. And he actually went to Linda Geddes' wedding. She's a journalist. You can see her at her wedding here. And he took her blood samples and checked her oxytocin levels and even the oxytocin levels of other wedding guests. And here's what they found. They found that the highest oxytocin levels were reached by the bride, then the mother of the bride, the father of the groom, the groom, then some of the bride's friends, and for some of the bridesmaids, it was even a negative correlation. And what he found is that the closer people felt to the bride, the higher the oxytocin levels went. When people sing together, when people celebrate birthdays together, when people in a business meeting create some kind of ritual, oxytocin levels go up. So rituals is really something we can use in a business setting. I know in some places of the world, you know, the wedding party or the couple, the groom and the bride, they walk over the guests after their departure. So when the wedding is over, they, people lay down and they walk all over them. People have interesting rituals all over the world. In Sweden, when the bride goes to the bathroom, all the female guests get to, you know, kiss the groom. And in Korea, I've heard that there's a fish slapping exercise where people actually get to slap the groom's feet with fish. So all over the world, we have rituals. And I think even in the business setting, there are some rituals that are very powerful, like handshakes, like having a flag in the background, like certain meetings. So we shouldn't underestimate the power of this. I think Fridays for Future is successful because they have ritualized it. You know, it's very easy. It's every Friday. The thing is not going to school. So it's a ritual rather than something very complicated. It's very easy for people to understand what you have to do to participate. And this way you can create a movement because there's a ritual. So if anything that's really successful in the world, very often you will find a ritual behind it. So my number, rule number eight or my eighth commandment is put a ring on it, you know, work with rituals, see, look, see if you can find a little ritual with your team to strengthen your bond.